You're listening to the Be Chic University podcast, and I am your host, Brittany Ball. On this show, we discuss all things millennial, but some of my favorite topics are money advice, career moves, productivity hacks, and managing a side hustle from five to nine when you have a nine to five. Catch these golden nuggets on the Be Chic University podcast as we dig into the millennial lifestyle with a hint of professional chic advice from yours truly. Tune in weekly for fresh content and check out my blog 24-7 for even more at bchicu.org. Now, let's get into the episode. Hello, good people. Welcome back again to the Be Chic University podcast. Before jumping in, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on your preferred streaming platform. This is the only way to ensure that you'll get updates when I drop new episodes. Also, I'd appreciate all the shares and reviews on Apple Podcasts and SoundCloud. So jumping into this week's content, we are continuing my home buying during COVID series. Today's episode is our second to last episode in the series, and we're talking about budgeting as a new homeowner. So just as a recap, um, we'll gloss over the content of my previous episodes to get you up to speed if you have not caught up on the last few episodes already. About a month ago, Nick and I closed on our first home here in Texas. Our experience was pretty unique as everything happened during the pandemic and most in-person services had been moved to virtual environments. And buying a home during COVID, I talked about the differences of buying a home during this time versus non-pandemic times. I then gave some advice and our own strategies to the financial aspect of buying our home in the episode, Our Financial Plan for Home Buying During COVID. Then last week, I walked through all the detailed steps we took in five months time to prep, search, and close on our home in the hour five month home buying timeline episode. (laughs) Super long names, I'm just now realizing, but those are the names of the episodes. So now we're digging into the aftermath, the real challenge in being a new homeowner, adjusting our budgets, and setting new goals for managing our new home. But before you listen on this episode, go back and check out the others I just listed off for the full experience of this podcast series. Oh, and before I forget, I have to update you all on my real estate licensing experience. So I took my state licensing exam this morning and I passed. I'm so relieved to be done with this process, but also excited to jumpstart my career, of course. If you listen to my past episodes, you know that I've been on this journey for a while now. I worked in property management in 2017 and then returned to real estate When I began my courses in June last year, 2019, the program I signed up actually wasn't good for me um, in my learning style. I guess it was good and it was a good value for the price it cost, but it just wasn't a good fit for me. So I ended up switching over to the CE shop, which is an online program, and I completed their courses between January and August this year. So um, that was followed by submitting my application and then studying for the license exam, of course. So these past two weeks, I've pretty much solely committed all of my evening time to studying. And I won't lie, this is actually the most studying I've done for anything in a long time. And that's including grad school. But it was all worth it. And I'm over that all important obstacle. So thanks to all my listeners who sent good vibes, good good prayers and good thoughts I really appreciate it I ask for you all to send those my way and so I appreciate it if you did but back to the, to today's episode um, I want to start off by talking about the mortgage payments and our utilities so the base mortgage payment thankfully consists of the principal interest taxes and insurance Um, So all of that is boring stuff, I know, but it's great that it was all kind of bundled together because those are less companies we need to individually pay, especially with taxes, um, because setting aside those funds on our own to pay once a year 
is more stressful than the money just being held for us by the lender who sends the payment to the county on our behalf. So with the utilities, that's a whole nother story because there are now additional services that we have to pay for that might have been bundled into our rent before, which I kind of talked about in a previous episode and probably multiple episodes. But I had a little bit of sticker shock when I started to add up all the additional utilities that we had to budget for. So that's why I'm bringing this up again Um, to give you an idea of what those look like. For our particular utilities, we have to separately pay for internet, electricity, gas, water, home security, pest control, our home warranty plan, and lawn maintenance. Like all of these are monthly expenses. Only the home warranty is an annual one. But these are all additional things. Well, not all of them. Some of them we've had before. But most of them are additions to our mortgage that weren't necessarily additions to our rent. So in comparison to those rental expenses, it actually doesn't come out to much more than what we paid before. And over time, the overall cost obviously will go down as we pay off like equipment related things. Um, Like with our security system, we have to pay for the equipment over time. But surprisingly, our electricity bill as well has been lower and we have like more than double the size. So Fingers crossed that trend remains the same because I'd be happy to have a lower electricity bill with all of these extra utilities. And I mentioned last week that a lot of our decisions to view a home came down to how manageable that potential expense of the mortgage would be and um, to see if it would fit into our budget. So we created a template that would give us the like ability to easily manipulate and compare those numbers. So once we had the numbers for all the utilities this time around, we added that with the mortgage and I figured out a monthly budget to include everything that I listed earlier. So I started to be able to like breathe a little bit better when I realized that we can handle this, even though I'm paying so many different little companies for separate things. So then I just adjusted my other numbers accordingly and that included like our grocery budget and shopping money that I set aside for myself being able to like still maintain those things, but adjust it to accommodate the utilities. And in the end, having that plan has helped tremendously as new utility bills become due. Now that we're going into our first full month, we're starting to see those bills come up for month one. And we won't be caught off guard because it's already in the budget and we can just pay them and get into the schedule of paying them. Uh, Some other expenses that new homeowners may have that we didn't have include HOA fees, which stands for Homeowners Association fees. These are pretty standard for condos because it covers common areas that people um, use within the community and it covers the maintenance. And then also there are some single family home subdivisions that can have these fees as well. So also, depending on where you live, you could experience extra fees for like waste removal and address change fees, which are nominal. And those are like mainly just at the beginning of moving. Um, But all of these are fees that will be brought up to you by your agent and the different people you work with throughout your closing process for your home so that you're not blindsided about something that you need to sign up for or add to your list. Another optional bill that we signed up for was an additional service obviously is water treatment so coming from Milwaukee we were so used to having great filtered water even from the tap because our city has one of the best water treatment plants in the world but the DFW water is not that way and Nick actually detected this instantly at our last apartment in our current place at the last apartment I kind of brushed it off but I definitely saw the difference when we moved here. The water treatment was actually worse than where we previously lived. And um, it was like kind of hard and very mineralized. As I say, when you see like all those extra bubbles in the water that doesn't go away, that's extra stuff in your water that's not being filtered out. So we actually made the investment to treat our water and not just getting like water softener to uh, take out some of the hardness, but... There is a system outside of our home that was installed that 
filters out all of the water that comes from the main line from the city before it even comes into our house. So our main line to our house is completely filtered. Everything that goes to the water heater that comes straight through the pipes to our faucets is now filtered. And that was an investment that we wanted to make just for our health and for the enjoyment of the water that we consume and absorb in the shower and all of that. So that system that was installed um, is another bill for us because we are currently paying for the equipment. And that's something for you to consider if you are very adamant about living like a chemical-free and organic life, just being able to cut out some of those environmental toxins that we are so used to consuming, that would be another place to look. But it is another monthly bill for us at least. And then last one, because I have a story for it, is the lawn care. So when we completed our final walkthrough of the home, we were actually approached by the landscaper who works on our neighbor's yard. And his quote was a little high for us, but it was funny that he approached us right away to try to get us into like a plan with him before we even moved in. But then three weeks later, we saw that our grass was growing like crazy and our Yard wasn't looking as nice. That was one of the things that really appealed to us when we first toured the home was how great of curb appeal our home had. And it's because the lawn was being taken care of very well and it was surrounded by homes that were also being taken care of very well. And so we didn't want to be that eyesore on the block. And I heard the lawn maintenance guy outside during the work day one day. I heard the equipment and I ran outside just to kind of like bump into him but knowing that I wanted to talk to him to see if he could work on our yard and he actually worked on our yard that day it looks beautiful now and I will never take for granted a wonderful lawn taken care of by a professional who knows what they're doing and that's something that we added on we just have so much pride in our yard now after having that service and just seeing the difference between how it looked just after a few weeks of moving in and living here versus how it looks now. So I will never forsake my yard again because of the great work that he did in comparison to when we just leave it as is. Um, But when it comes to organizing our actual funds, Nick and I take separate and combined approaches. Um, We each take separate ownership of certain bills and then combine our funds for others. I think this works well for us because we appreciate our independence, but then we also recognize our codependence and the fact that we are more impactful with certain bills when we team up and we put our money together. And... These still align with our budget goals that we worked out originally, but we just approach it in these two ways. Um, We also talk weekly about our new goals, such as um, paying extra towards debt, adjusting our spending budgets, um, attacking different repairs and wish list items for our furniture and things like that around the house. And... Um, Just giving each other savings updates and savings expectations that we have that might change on a weekly or biweekly basis. Having those regular conversations has been making it easier for us to adjust to our new budgets because we're constantly in communication about our budget. And speaking of savings goals, we've been on a roller coaster trying to figure this out just right as if it's a science. So we did pretty well saving specifically for our home down payment. But now that that major sum of cash is no longer in our accounts, we're motivated to save quickly to rebuild our savings. There are a few key goals we identify to feel secure in our savings again. And that was the rainy day fund, of course, um, home repairs and renovations, and then also extra debt payments. So going back to our weekly finance talks, we discuss how We want to apply our savings for the upcoming paychecks to each of these areas. So the amounts we apply each category fluctuates and it's based on what our priorities are at those moments. So that's another reason why we want to be in constant communication because we make minor adjustments all the time. While completing our first time homebuyers course, 
we actually got advice on how to plan for home maintenance finances. And as a rule of thumb, we're encouraged to save about 2% of our home value and savings for maintenance and repairs. So for example, if you purchase a home for $100,000, your savings would be $2,000. So this was a great starting point for us, at least in my mind, to determine what would be a comfortable or safe amount to have in the bank for future home concerns. So I really liked having that advice and it is aspiring or giving me something to aspire towards before determining, okay, we've hit our goal. Now we can like dial back our savings to a more maintenance level um, worth of savings instead of it being such an aggressive approach to build our savings back up. So along with savings, we also made it a point to continue focusing on our credit. Um, Nick took on all of the credit bearing tasks in this process. So he has a bit of recovery of his own to do just because there being so much activity on his credit reports. And then I'm still working on my credit improvement process that I previously mentioned on uh, the podcast. So outside of new home things, we wanted to stay away from any new credit activity so that we could focus on paying off items completely and slowly raising our scores even more. Unfortunately, I had some pretty hefty car repairs this weekend, so I actually purchased a new car. Um, Well, it was new to me, but used with great mileage, so I was very happy with the pick, but I hope it doesn't affect our goals too much because it's just another thing that we have to Uh, take care of that's been added to the mix on top of us being new homeowners as well but the good thing about the situation though is that I was able to almost instantly adjust my budget and review the new car loan terms while at the dealership I pulled up my budget on my phone and crunched the numbers and just like that I knew that I could afford everything continue on like business as usual This was a moment where our budget template truly saved us and made things easier, even with a new home to worry about. We also created a priority schedule for repairs, upgrades, furniture, and other decor, you know. Um, For example, there was a plumbing issue that we had to repair once we obtained ownership of the house. And I mentioned on previous episodes that Our sellers had already moved, and so any repairs that we requested after our inspection actually was just given um, credit to our closing costs from the sellers in order for us to do those repairs on our own because they weren't actually here to complete them. So that was one of the things that we had to, like, address right away, and um, it was a priority, obviously, before we moved in. So that was bumped up to the top of the list. And then Nick also purchased me a desk for home. Um, just weeks after moving in because it was a functional need as I'm working from home right now. And But on the flip side, our living room furniture is lower on the priority list because we have what we need for now to enjoy the family room at least. So we've been approaching our wish list and needs based on cost and then how soon we would need the items or repairs. This keeps us grounded But frankly, it keeps the overwhelm of all the things that we want and have to do for our home at bay. And it just kind of gives me a peace of mind because we have a strategy and a plan for everything that we want to attack. The last thing that has really been helpful in saving us money are the various services that we have. Thanks to the professionals we've been working with and just programs that we're already enrolled in. So our home warranty, for example... It covers any appliance issues that we can save money on replacement costs or expensive repairs. And we also can use them for smaller things all in one place like carpet cleaning, rekeying the doors, mounting our TV, those kind of things all under one umbrella and not having to go out and find different services to complete it. And then the cherry on top of that, we even have a small credit to apply to our first service thanks to our agent. We've also been thinking of outside of the box when searching for things we want in the house, like our new appliances, seeing if there's a discount that Nick has through his job that we can apply through those company partnerships, or even knocking off a few dollars on purchases from moving specials that we receive through the postal service after changing our address. 
I am probably still subscribing from emails from companies I don't really shop with. But you better believe I'm taking that little 10% I got from Amazon for any items that I need for the house. But I think my favorite, though, is reaching out to new vendors who are locally owned and even most of the time black owned as referrals and them giving us special pricing because of who we know. And that's because we're helping keep their business alive and we're supporting companies that are affiliated with each other um, because we worked with one person and then we went and then worked with someone else and that continue their relationship growth but then us building out our network of professionals we can reach out to to assist us with our home so as you can see this process has so many moving parts and even after the home closing it can get overwhelming even for the most organized person like myself the home purchase process and beyond takes dedication patience faith and calm I struggled with all of these things over these past six months now, but I did learn some lessons along the way that I will actually share next week. That's right. We'll be talking about the emotional side of purchasing a home and how we cope with the roller coaster it put us on. So that's it. Um, Our first time homeowners budget and how we are approaching our finances now that the loan has been secured and we are starting to see First month's bills roll in. Say that three times fast. Uh, So I mentioned a lot of tools today on the podcast that I created on my own and that I created in conjunction with Nick. And we still use them to this day. Our budget template, our repairs and upgrades list, and more from my past episodes all within this series. And today I just want to share that I got so much out of this experience, partially because I was studying for my real estate license, that I wanted to help others take this process head on and be successful at it stress-free. So if you're looking to purchase a home soon or not so soon, and you just rather have all this stuff laid out for you, a planner of sorts that gives you space to simply fill in the blanks and organize all your home buying and new homeowner experience, I will have just that for you in my new homeowner's planner from Be Chic. Name pending. There might be a more clever name coming out. But you can pre-order it today at bchicu.org slash homeowner planner. And I will also have the link to this in the show notes, so don't worry about trying to scribble that down real quick. But um, it will be full of all kinds of resources that you need to stay organized and stress-free while purchasing your home. And it'll just have lots of step-by-step tasks and resources and things that you need to capture in order to be successful in your pursuit of buying your home, whether it's your first home or not. So check out more about that at bchicu.org forward slash homeowner planner. And again, that will be in the show notes. So pre-orders are available now and it'll be launching on November 1st. So thanks for tuning in to this episode, you guys. Don't forget to subscribe, share, download this episode and review the podcast. I'd really appreciate it. Um, We'll be back next week with fresh content. As I mentioned, the emotional process, roller coaster, all of that in the home buying process and what we learn from it. But until then, check out what I'm sharing on my blog at bshakeu.org. You don't have to wait an entire week to see what's there. So definitely check out the blog. And then also head over there to pre-order your new homeowner's planner. And that'll be available on November 1st. 